I'd now like to talk about this 8x8 eight eight patch antenna array. This is a fairly standard uh, type of geometry uh, microstrip corporate fed patch array with the port being down at the bottom of the picture. The reason we're looking at this uh, particular array is if we look at the mesh, which I'm showing you right now, uh, it's very large. Uh, I, of course, I've zoomed in on just four of the patches so you can see more of the detail. But this uh, is the type of problem that traditionally just would not be possible to solve with a planar solver. I started the animation so you can go ahead and see that the currents uh, are flowing on the patch as you'd expect. Well, how big is this uh, particular mesh? And the answer is, if we just go ahead and open up the information panel. We see that it's 82,000 unknowns. How long did it take to solve? Just look at the simulation log. And if we go ahead and look at it and scroll on down, we get the answer that it took 12 minutes and 15 seconds to solve. Notice that these bottom two fields uh, are saying that to calculate the antenna patterns actually take an additional 20 minutes because we have two different patterns. Why does that take so long? Because you have to integrate the current on the patches to get the antenna patterns, and you have a large number of unknowns for your currents. Just to prove to you that we can get the patterns, uh, I'm showing them to you right here. And this is the standard type of pattern you would expect from a broadside uh, array. Let me now explain why 82,000 unknowns is considered a large problem. What you see before you is the graph of how long it takes for a moment method uh, type solver to solve, and, and Axiom is of the moment method family of solvers. And I want you to focus on the n cubed on the right hand side of the curve for the matrix solve with a direct solver. N cubed is a large number. Now what this means is if you double the number of cells, number of unknowns, it takes 8 times longer because 2 cubed is 8. Iterative solvers, like the ones used in Axiom, have an asymptotic limit of going as fast as N log N. And let's see how this translates uh, for our problem into looking at the real numbers. So. If you had 1,000 unknowns, it takes about one minute to solve that on a uh, typical vanilla type machine with one core. Now, I'll talk more about multiple cores in a few seconds. We had 82,000 unknowns, so the 82 cubed ends up giving us a solve time of 13 months, which I'm sure you agree is not very realistic. We were actually running that problem on an eight core machine and let's assume maximum efficiency and divide our 13 months by 8. I'm still left with six and a half weeks. Again, a totally unrealistic number. And I would like to remind you with the iterative solver, we solved the problem in a little over 12 minutes. So you can see the huge benefit of using iterative solvers uh, for these large patch antenna arrays. The final thing I'd like to demonstrate today is how Axiom integrates very well into the microwave office environment. Now, to show this, uh, I picked this following antenna example that you see before you. And basically, this is a Butler feed matrix, the circuitry you see on the right, feeding an 8x1 patch array. Uh, you notice if I uh, rotate so you can see underneath the patches, the, they're parasitic being patches being fed by the Butler matrix with the uh, actual radiating patches above them. If we look at this schematic, we actually have the entire Butler matrix here on the right, along with the antenna on the left, which is just the uh, block that you see there, the subcircuit. Now this has several advantages for the designer. First of all, if I click on this extraction block, Notice that the entire schematic turns red. So what I can do is very easily send the entire layout of this schematic, which would include the antenna and the Butler matrix. I can send that right away to Axiom. Axiom can simulate it, bring the S parameters back in, and then all graphs are updated. 
And this is uh, greatly superior to having to manually cut and paste the layout from the schematic layout into the EM project and then manually re-import the S parameters. Another advantage of this sort of technique is we can now take advantage of, of course, all the models and uh, layout features that are available in schematic and schematic layout. And let me show you one example of that very quickly. I'm going to zoom in on the schematic here and you'll notice this element called an mtrace2. I go ahead and click on it and I'm going to select it in layout and you can see it's highlighted here. Uh, it's this hairpin. And basically what this is, is this is a uh, transmission line model uh, combined with bend models. So we actually have one, two, three, four, five transmission line models and three uh, excuse me, four bend models behind the scenes. Now what I can do with this sort of thing is, for example, if the designer uh, is interested in getting the phase delay exactly correct on this, he or she can easily trombone the structure. And you see me doing that right here in real time. And then the results would very quickly update because this is just a model. Again, it's just transmission line models and bend models. Once they get close, the designers could then ship the entire circuit out to EM to verify uh, that the um, intended phase delay was about correct. So you can see that this interaction between EM schematic and schematic layout is really a very powerful tool and really very ver valuable, especially when you're designing the feed networks for the various antenna arrays. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I hope you got some useful information out of this video. If you would like more information on our software including Axiom, our EM simulator, please feel free to visit our website at awrcorp.com. That's awrcorp.com.